Greetings, dear ones. I'm Kryon of Magnetic Service. Again, my partner steps aside. And it feels like that to him. And he's gotten used to it. But he's not going to get used to what I'm going to do tonight. For I'm going to use him as an example. A premise that we're going to talk about regarding the human being's ability to talk to themselves in a way that is not linear. And so I want you to clear your minds as we begin this particular channeling. And as I look at you for a moment, in a way you don't expect, There was a time I didn't think this might happen. That sounds funny coming from the other side of the veil, does it not? All of those lifetimes that you've lived, all that you've been through, all the things that you've suffered from. And at the last possible moment in this lifetime, it gets turned around. I think we've said this before, this was a surprise. A surprise that the consciousness of humanity could, could turn so quickly, that it would happen during the precession of the equinox, ramp up the 18 years. We didn't expect it. We want to tell you something even before we begin the information, and that is this. It is so new for you that the adjustment into the new energy becomes a rough time. And we know it. You can't go from an old energy to a new one without the transition. You can't see, flip a switch and say, well, it's okay now. And so there is an adjustment in all parts of you. And the old soul is the one who feels it first. And so the discussion in this channeling, in this evening, for those who can hear my voice, is about the mystery, the mystery of opening the door. A door that is, that is there so strongly separating you from the corporeal self to the innate. So let's back up a minute. And let's go slow, my partner. Dear ones, we have given information about the nine energies of the human being, and three of them are in one group three of them in another, and three in another. You see the threes everywhere. There is the human group, there is the soul group, there is the support group. We want to talk about the one group tonight, which is the human group, and the three energies we have talked about is human consciousness, something called the higher self, and a very mysterious one called innate. Now, last evening, we gave a full disclosure of what innate is. We gave information that was beyond anything we have given before. We've even given it a name. Innate is the second brain. For the first brain is the one that you use in 3D. And that brain has synapse. It has memory. It has logic. It is wired for survival. Innate is another brain that is not logical. It is conceptual. It is not linear. It is dynamically quantum. <laughs> Always changing. 
always working in a way that you're not used to. And to your perception, you stand in your three-dimensional corporeal body and you ask the question, Dear Cryon, how can I now get through to my cells? How can I talk to my cells? You've talked about all these things, mining the Akash, the bridge to the innate, the smart body versus the logical body, all of these things, and I stand at a door I cannot penetrate. And you'll be right. You'll be right. And now it's time to penetrate it. <laughs> and so we start the discussion of what it's like, what's, what's needed, and I'm going to use my partner as an example. And he's not going to like it. But I'm going to show you what happened to him and what he experienced because he had to go through the door. Now, right away, you picture a door that will not open. If you could open it, you'd be in touch with your intelligent cellular self, the innate, the one you muscle test to. The one that knows what you're allergic to, the one that knows how you should eat or not eat. The one that knows everything that's going on in your body, even if you don't. We mentioned last night, you could have a raging disease in your body and your brain won't tell you. You'll just cruise along as if nothing has happened and your brain will only respond with pain. The innate, that is your intelligent body, the second brain, the conceptual one, knows the instant the disease is there. Isn't it odd that you have to muscle test to ask your body about what you're allergic to, perhaps? And your brain won't know. That ought to tell you that there is a, a shared intelligence in your body. But in 3D, with your DNA working the way it is right now, you are only using the three-dimensional part the analytical, the intellect. You're using that which computes and sees, stores, and has the memory. It's the survival brain that you're using. And it's been good enough till now. That's what we want to discuss. What are you supposed to do? What's the difference between them? Let's look at that first. The goal is to open the door. You know that. It's not easy. When the entire box of your survival and everything you've ever known doesn't include it. Doesn't even know about it. It's mysterious. How do you do it? Let us examine the difference between what we would call the two brains. The one you're used to, we will say, is the intellectual brain. The one that's got you to the place where you are, the one that you can think anything you want to, the one that is scientific, the one that explores the universe with your imagination, all of those things. But there's something it can't do. It cannot get into the conceptual, multidimensional part of your DNA. There is no connection between the human synaptical three-dimensional brain and the innate. There just isn't. That's why you doubt even the things that I might be saying now, but you know there's a smart body. You muscle test it to find out. How do you put them together? The answer is you don't. You acknowledge that there is two. And you acknowledge that one is very different than the other. The intellectual will not be able to think its way through this. For there is no connection. 
There's no bridge yet between what we would call the two brains. So there would be those who would leave the room trying to think their way through this puzzle, and it isn't going to work. So let's talk about the other brain. This other brain of yours, represented mostly by the innate intelligence of your body and the higher self together, is totally and completely conceptual. There are no linear moving parts. <laughs> How do you talk to that? How do you work with that? So I'm going to give you some concepts. I'm going to tell you how my partner did it and what he found out. And a couple of the things that he, that he had to do in order to, to get to where he is now. It's interesting that you see a door that you can't open dear ones it's really interesting the first thing I want you to do is to eliminate the door it's not there not really the door seems to be there because your linear brain cannot think about it so it's a barrier doesn't know what to do it's a barrier so it becomes a door. It's not. So the first step is to eliminate the concept of the door. <laughs> if the door is missing, everything you want, all the communication that you would like, the concepts of the higher self, the love of God, all of the things that you desire to touch and feel and be, let them show as though there were no door. That's the first step. The innate and the higher self use the tool that is quantum in your body that is least understood, intuition. It is a muscle that we are asking you to start to exercise and use intuition. Now, some of you already know how to use it in marginal ways, but it is elusive in that it comes and goes quickly. And so what we say to you, because it does that, is trust first intuitive thought. And honor the fact that the first intuitive thought is often the highest communication innate has to you. First intuitive thought. Now I want you to understand the concept that we're about to present. Your higher self is connected to the whole. The whole of humanity. All of the souls on the planet. There is a connection. There is a connection of the higher self through the pineal into the other side of the veil. It is part of the whole. Therefore, it sees on a far grander scale than you possibly can. In a linear way, it's perched above you, looking at everything around you, things you cannot see. It is responsible for helping you with synchronicity. It pushes and pulls. Think for a moment. There are those here who only at the last moment had an intuitive flash to come. You know what that's like, don't you? And now you sit in the chair and now you know why. You needed to be here. You needed to hear the things that were presented in the way they were presented. That's intuition at its best and you honored it. Even some of you didn't plan on coming to the meeting, came anyway. Because someone else had the intuition to invite you. It's the same. This is spirit at its best, working with the human at its best, with a conceptual way. No voices out of the sky. No writing on the wall. It comes into your brain as intuitive thought that's conceptual, so it does not linearize itself, ever. And so it comes as a flash, and it's gone. 
Second step, learn to recognize intuitive thought. Learn to hold it longer if you can. To stop and analyze what it was if you can. Because you must take the conceptual intuitive part of your body, which is the innate brain, and work with it with the intellectual brain. And in order to do that, you've got to cognize it. You've got to see for what it is and understand it. It's not easy. It's not easy. Now, some of you have already done it, and you know, and we talked about this last night, and not in a comedic way. You've discovered you can use it in the guise of the parking angel. And honestly, between you and I, you're good at it. You really are. You live in an area where you need it, and you're good at it. <laughs> and you involve this seeming outside source to find you a parking place because you cannot see the whole lot. And you trust it. And you'll turn left and you'll turn right until the space opens up. And you feel that you have used an energy that is beyond yourself, which you then call the parking angel. But you also understand at the intuitive level, do you not, that you just used your own intuition. Assigning it to an angel makes you feel better. <laughs> and you know that's accurate. This is what we're talking about. So you do it on a, on a level that is fun, but requires that you listen. And you do it in real time. Nobody tells you in advance where the space is going to be. You do it in real time. And you're, you're so good at it, you'll do it again and again and again, and you'll become even better at it. This is first intuitive thought. Can you do it with your cellular structure? Can you talk to it in a way that my partner had to? He's had to do a number of things in his life that required that he learned intuitive thought and how to linearize the things in his life. I want to show you just one, perhaps two if there's time. And how it was presented to him and what he did with it. When Cryon first came into his life, and I was there, he didn't like it. <laughs> he didn't like it because we used the innate to talk to him. And the only way we could get his attention was through emotion. Because there's no intellectualizing the love of God. And when he sat in the chair for the first time, <laughs> he wept. And he didn't know why. He felt, he felt he had a whole body experience. He didn't know why. And his intellect got angry. Mm -hmm. And the anger was because he wasn't prepared for emotion when he didn't authorize it. <laughs> and the intellect then got in the way. Because the emotion was something that he didn't expect or authorize or even want at the moment. But it came freely to him. We got his attention through his emotional self. That's the innate at its best. And so right away you see the mechanics of how this works. Not through thought, but through concepts, through emotions, through intuition. How do you talk to yourselves? <laughs> and if you could, what are you going to say? So let's discuss my partner. We're going to give you two examples. I told my partner early on, I said, if you want to, 
You don't have to grow old as fast. And I want you to teach it. And so here we sit, teaching it. And he said to me, how? And I said, you got to talk to yourselves. And he says, how? That's the question you're asking too, right now. How are you going to open that door? There is no door. So now what's next? And I told him, if you start asking, Spirit is going to give you intuitive flashes that are answers to what you're asking for, and you're going to have to watch for the concepts. And he started getting them. He didn't know what to do with it. It's the first time we've told the story. He's uncomfortable because he didn't want, he wants story told. It's too simplistic. It's, it shows his weakness. We gave him the picture of a telephone <laughs> over and over, over and over, picture of a telephone. He didn't know what to do with it. You know what he did? He started picking up telephones and listening. <laughs> How linear. <laughs> and then he realized it's an internal telephone. <laughs> I'm going to talk to myself. I've got to learn to pick up the internal telephone. And so he started visualizing, picking up the phone and listening. And he got good at it. But every time he picked it up, there wasn't anything there. <laughs> And he would listen, and he would listen. And he would say to me in meditation, I did everything I can think of. Now I understand it's a, a, a conceptual telephone, and I'm listening, and I'm not hearing anything at all. And we couldn't give him any answers. Got to do it for yourself. You got to figure it out. Pictures of a telephone, more and more. And then he got it. I can't talk to myself by listening to anything. And the next time he picked up the internal telephone and visualized it, he spoke in the phone. And he said, dear cellular structure, are you listening? And the response he got immediately was chills and emotion. And if I could give you what truly happened, all the cells of his body were cheering and said, it's about time we heard from the boss. And then I started telling him, I said, listen, your cellular structure ages automatically without your involvement with a rhythm that has even been described by biologists. It has to do with the moon and it's built in. And it wouldn't matter if you were in a coma. It just does what it does automatically. It's on autopilot. You can intercept that autopilot anytime you want to by picking up the phone and telling them what you want them to do that is not autopilot. I hope you understand this. He got the concept. He started speaking in the phone. What is he going to tell cellular structure that's conceptual and not linear? But he figured out that following the moon cycle and aging and reproducing the cellular split is a linear process. So he told his cells to start counting every other day. That's the concept. To cut the aging down to half of what it was designed for. He started doing that five years ago. And now he sits before you, having aged two years. Having more energy than he's ever had in his life because he used the telephone. Is that too simple for you? No linear instructions. The concept, there is no door. 
figure it out. It wants to talk to you in concepts and intuitive flashes and thoughts, and it's going to give you pictures. And with the pictures, you're going to have to figure out how the communication is going to work. Not all of you will get a telephone. Some of you are designed to talk to your innate directly. Your Akash has done it before, old soul, because you're shamanic. And you've been doing it for years. You just forgot. Some of you are going to do it through sound and color. Some of you already are. Some of you are going to use energy to speak to your own body through processes you've learned that my partner never learned, has no idea about. He needed a telephone. He's an engineer. I'll tell you the second one. It's just as bizarre. Dear ones, what diet will make you enlightened? <laughs> well, there's a lot of books about it. And they all claim the same thing. You do this one, you'll be enlightened. Others have said, your body was never meant to eat this way. You should eat this way. And it will cleanse you in a way that spirit will honor yourselves differently. You're doing it wrong, you're saying. There are as many stories as there are books. I gave you the information. It's, it's in the last book's transmission, which my partner calls book 12. It's there. I'll give it to you again, and I gave it to my partner, and I gave it to him two years ago. I said, if you're going to use the telephone, and if you're going to talk to yourselves about, about not aging as fast, you're not going to have any luck. If you're as heavy as you are, you got to take some weight off. He didn't like that either. <laughs> you mean in order to youth, I'm going to have to have to have less weight? Yes. It comes with the territory. It's going to enhance what the body is trying to do. You can't tell the body to do one thing and then float off and then do the opposite. You're going to have to lose weight. He asked how much. And there was no number because that's linear enough. He had no concept. He said, how? And I said, innate will tell you. You see, I don't have the answer for his body. His body has the answer for his body. Do you know this? And I'll just give it to you straight, dear ones. Your Akash, old soul, has got hundreds of lifetimes, and in many of them, you were exactly the right health. You were eating exactly the right food for your cellular remembrance and for that which you need today. And for many of you, it's not eating like an American. It would be like eating as you did in the past that enhanced your growth. And that's what the cells want. My partner find out. We gave him a picture. This is the first time we've told you this. He's not happy about this one either. The picture was of a menu. <laughs> like you would have in a restaurant. All folded lovely. That's what we gave him over and over. So what he tried to do in all linearity was open the menu. I mean, after all, you're given a menu. What do you do with it? <laughs> you open it. Of course, he couldn't because it's just in his imagination. It's just in his intuition. How do you open an intuitive thought of a menu? You can't. So what's it mean? He didn't know. He had no idea. And then he started thinking about it. And then he got it. I told you, did I not, that 
innate can talk to you in very interesting ways. You can muscle test it. It's responsible for the chills of discernment. Those of you right now, some of you are feeling the fact that this is true. Perhaps it's even for you. Feel the chills. Your innate is jumping up and down and saying, listen, 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 listen. And you feel the chills in your body. That is innate doing its job for you. He got it. The next time he went to a, a restaurant, he opened the menu, ran his finger down the choices, and listened for the chills. <laughs> didn't tell anybody he was doing it either. He got them. He didn't necessarily like them, but he got them. Because he wanted so bad to have the chills over donut. <laughs> Baked potato. And bread and instead he got soup and salad <laughs> the meat of his choice if he chose not much of it and that was it and here's what happened and I want to tell you because this dear ones again your cellular structure wants this you're not forcing something. It wants this. He started eating the things that he felt the chills for over and over and over. He still does to this day. And what eventually happened over time was not only did the weight come down, 26 pounds of it, but what happened next was he found he didn't need the chills anymore. He knew what to eat because his body craved it. And it didn't want the donut. And it didn't want the baked potato. And it didn't want the bread. And to this day, he pushes them away. He pushes them away not because he's a good boy. Because he knows his diet. Because his cellular structure just flat out doesn't want them. That's the promise. Doesn't get much better than that, does it? You are retraining your cellular structure to eat in the best way that your Akash remembers your best health. And then he asked me, can you tell me, Kryon, what my innate gave me that worked so well? Where was I? And I said to him, right back to the beginning when you were a runner in Lemuria. You didn't have a whole lot of meat. You had some. You had a whole lot of vegetation and beautiful soups. You're eating like a Lemurian and enjoying it yet again. And he smiled because he knew I was right. <laughs> it worked. Concepts, intuition, and you never could intellectualize that, ever. The door that used to be there in his life is starting to crumble. He's going to work on some other concepts as well. And they will come slowly, and there'll be puzzles. But dear human being, this is the answer. Use the second brain. Sit in meditation and have the audacity to speak out loud to your cellular structure. And through your ears, it's going to hear you. Through your vibrations of intent, it's going to hear you. Give intuition back to it through human consciousness of love and compassion. Love yourself. And your cellular structure will cooperate more than ever. It's a new way of being human. It starts to talk to the parts that you never even thought you had that will change you. And the disease that might be in you right now will withdraw and run the other way because it's not in the program of the love of God. The problems you have, they can't survive in a new kind of human body. Your wisdom factor will go up. The consciousness that you have will see the earth differently. All of these things are related to removing the door and becoming who you came to be. It's not too soon for these things. They're hard. They're not linear. They're not what you expect. And all of you as old souls can do it. Every single one. It 
just depends on how much you want it. Some of you will choose not to in this lifetime. And it will become easier the next time around. The kids, some of them being born right now, are into this. They know it. They're listening. They're conceptual. They're using intuitive thought to guide their lives. Much to the adults' consternation. Because the adults want them to be linear. <laughs> Do what they did. Go where they should. And the children are not doing it. Right now in the Middle East, right now, there are children who are refusing to be standard Israelis or standard Iranians or standard Palestinians. And instead, they have chosen a new lifestyle of being the new human on earth that rejects war and hatred and history that means nothing to a new earth. They will have no war. That's what's going on. And you're going to see it, maybe even in your lifetime. Can you see why we're excited about these things? We've gone far enough. It's time to leave. I challenge you to take these things and work with them. There's no structure. How do you feel about it? And it's, how about, how about uh, instructions without structure? <laughs> Let the structure be something you intuit. It will be perfect for you. Perfect for you. Old soul. And so it is.